Welcome to the Sponge Helm Guide. This guide is focused on sloop, but most of these tips apply to all boat sizes. I've timestamped this video so you can skip or go back to particular areas. If you have any further questions, please ask in the comments or in my Discord. Before getting too complicated, here are some rules you should always follow. 1. Give left side, no matter what. This is rule 1 for a reason. In theory, there is one fewer hole in the left side of the sloop. In practice, there are really two. This is because the cannon fire is concentrated in the middle of the sloop. Now even though there's only one fewer hole on the left side, we can think about it as really being two, practically. That's because we have one hole in the middle here where most cannons are going to land, and nothing on the left of it here. This is important. Because if cannons are hitting the middle of the boat, where the cannon is, you can see it, they're going to be hitting here. On the right side, they're going to be hitting down the water barrel, which means they could hit here or here. The other cannons that hit the middle of the boat are going to hit around here, where the mast is and the wheel is beneath the wheel. So that adds up this hole as well and this hole, but also on the right side, this hole. So we take a total count. We've got stove hole, main hole. We've got captain's table hole, and that's two for the left side. We're not going as far out as this one, so we can draw a line from here. On this side, no hole here, that's fine. No hole here, this doesn't count because we drew the line here. We'll start from here. One hole at the ammo box. One hole at the stairs. One hole to the right of water barrel and one hole to the left of water barrel. All before we've reached the front of the boat. So counting back, we've got one, two, versus one, two, three, four. So the practical holes that you have on the right side of the boat are way worse than any practical holes that you can get on the left side of the boat. Other reasons to give left side include the first mast rep is on the right, meaning you can see incoming cannons and avoid them while you're repairing. The stairs are on the right, so when you are bucketing or going up to helm, you don't get repeatedly knocked around by cannonballs. When mast drops, it drops over the right side, blocking movement. Two your mast. Don't rep your mast when you have other things to do. You could be bucketing or repairing holes. I see so many crews that waste 10 seconds repairing mast and full dropping sails just for it to get chain shot again, and all their work is for nothing. You should catch your mast if you have time, but leave the repairs on it for later. 3. Repair your wheel. Don't bother turning it while it's tripled. It'd be faster to put a plank on and then turn. It's essential that you keep your left side pointed at the enemy, so it's essential that you keep your wheel repped. 4. Talk. Communicate with your teammate. Say what you're doing, what you're about to do. Ask them what they're doing. It's hard to overcome. And when you do, your teammate will tell you to shut the fuck up. Five, empty your bucket. Don't walk around with a full bucket, you will backsplash. Every time you bucket, you should remember to throw the water back out. When you're moving around the boat, you should feel the weight of that bucket and need to throw it. Six, look up. Stop looking at the floor, there's nothing there, your bucket doesn't grab any faster when you look down, keep your eyes up and watch the other boat and what they're doing. You should never be above deck and not looking at the enemy's boat. That's how you get one ball. Bonus rule, watch Sponge Stream and ask me questions live. Don't hesitate to ask dumb shit, I read my chat even during hourglass games. Start every game by turning right. If you can't turn right because there's a rock or a storm, turn around and find a better spot to fight. Raise your sails to roughly a third. If the other boat turns the same way as you, they're taking a parallel. This is cringe and lame, as cannons tend to be much harder to hit when traveling in a straight line, especially if you're heading northwest. This results in a more random game. Don't get me wrong, skilled cannoneers are still good in a parallel, but everyone loses in a parallel. The upside of the parallel is you have an advantage as they are giving right side. Breaking rule one. Drop your sails to full sail. If you don't, they will, and they'll be in front of you. If you do, and they don't, then you will get in front of them. I don't care if your cannoneer complains, oh, I want to match their sailing so I can just point at the middle of their boat. Your cannoneer sucks and needs to learn to lead their shots. Full sail, mask them, get in front, raise and spiral. If they turn for an orbital, then it'll be a fun, fair, even matched game. Your priorities for the opening and mid game are angle and wheel repping right side holes, and occasionally getting the rep on mast. When you have spare time, you can snipe as well. I'll go into this more later. If you're winning and you mast the other boat, 
Your job as the helm is to keep moving and keep left side pointed at the other boat as you spin around them with your cannoneer creating holes. From here it's easy, figure it out. If your mast goes down, catch it. Don't repair unless you have very little pressure. Keep your wheel repped and keep angled. Your cannoneer always needs angle so they can keep cannoning and creating pressure for the other boat. This stops the opponent from gaining ground on you. Even if you're mastered first, the other boat isn't winning yet as long as you keep angle. Ideally, both boats get mastered and you're pointing left side at each other. This is when helming actually begins. Now your priorities. 1. Angle. Rep your wheel once to turn unless the adjustment is only one rung. Don't rep twice and leave. You rep once or you rep three times. There's no point in repping twice because if it gets hit by a cannon, it always does two damage. If your anchor goes down, you need to get a snipe on cannon or have the opponent's boat be in front of you such that they do not knock you off the anchor raise. Two, bucket. You may ask why is this after angle? Well, because angle comes first. If you need angle but you hear water creaking, ask your cannoneer to grab a bucket for you. Three, repair. Assuming the opponent is on the left, here is the order that you can repair. Repair right sides, repair front hole, repair front left hole, repair the back two, repair the front left vanity hole, repair the back left hole. You are now main two. You can rep mast or send a border. If you choose to get full dry first, which is valid, then rep the captain table hole, and then stove hole while cannoneer holds cannon line. Assuming the opponent is spiraling you, if your cannoneer is out of angle to chop the other boat, you probably f***ed up. But, they can now go below deck and begin repping holes while you bucket, fix angle, and guard for borders. More on that later. They should prioritize repping lower deck holes that are on the opposite side from where the enemy's boat is, or where the enemy's boat is starting to lose sight of. Once your position stabilizes, your cannoneer should aim to chop the other boat and regain an even footing. Bucketing. Avoid the windows. Even though they're windows, you can hardly see out of them. You get a much better view out the stairs. You also can't tell whether you backsplash or not when you throw out of them. And you will backsplash a lot when you throw out of them. Avoid throwing out the back unless it's necessary due to a border. I don't care if the other boat is shooting at your stairs. Time your buckets and if you know there is a cannon coming in, wait for it to hit and then bucket to avoid backsplashes. Throw your buckets high, you'll hit your teammate much less often. While you bucket, think about your reps and holes while looking at the other boat. You should be mindlessly bucketing while watching the other boat helm to see if they're repping mast or turning wheel. Sometimes when you're doing this, you'll see them repping wheel or mast and you can calm your teammate to aim a cannon at them. Once your water is drained or below 25%, then you can throw in a snipe in the bucket cycle. Sniping. You should aim to snipe the opponent's cannoneer while they're holding the cannon. Otherwise, they'll be moving unpredictably and you are less likely to hit them. At the start of the game, this is obviously harder as their boat is far away and moving fast. If they're really far away, then you'll need to aim above the opponent to account for bullet drop, and it's almost not worth shooting. But the general idea of crossboat sniping is aim at cannon, adjust according to your relative velocity, fire, watch the bullet, and adjust for the next shot. I intend to go more in depth on this in a future video. You don't need to con to cross or double snipe. If you never cross or double snipe, you will be okay. There is a misconception, even at a very high level of play, that you should call for a cross or coordinate shooting the enemy cannoneer at the same time with your teammate. This technique can result in kills and can look cool, but realistically, it's not worth the setup. Hourglass is a game of time, credit Nessie, and every second you use to coordinate a snipe is wasted if the opponent doesn't die. But if you simply don't cross or double snipe, you waste zero time. The opponent has to let go of cannon and eat and use time and your cannoneer gets to continue cannoning without losing time. When you call for a cross, you spend time getting both players ready, aiming and firing at the same time. It's almost never worth it. You don't need to kill the other boat's players. Mildly inconveniencing them 10 times is enough. And then one of those times, your cannoneer will notice of their own volition that they could snipe the cannoneer and you will telepathically cross them. Did cannon? Killed. Nice. My usual duo Nessie will hear me ADS and if it doesn't take from his time, he will also scope in and shoot at the cannon, without any need for timing across and wasting time. This further goes back to communication. I always call hit cannon when I hit cannon, because your teammate will hear hit cannon and think about whether they're able to snipe as well, or if the opponent has already eaten and they may as well keep cannoning. Defending borders. You need a blunder. It might be fun for you to have a pistol or a sword, but this guide isn't about having fun. 
This is about winning. You are running Blunder Snipe. You can keep bucketing until you hear board sound and focus, because you need to hear it. But when you do hear it, jump and look at the ladder they're on. If you can hit them with three pellets, then shoot. Ideally, you knock them off ladder. If you don't, then you swap to snipe and you kill them. If they make it up, then you need to reload blunder, sniper comes second, you now need to juggle bucketing and blunderbuss shots and reloads and eat it to stay alive. Your goal is to either kill them or knock them off the boat. Ideally, using all of these strategies, you regain an even footing again or you win your game. Once you're in the even footing, you're back to square one, you follow the priorities, you get your mast up, you spiral them. You don't get your mast up, you send the border. You win the game, that's it. Yeah, let's Yay. go! But if you don't win the game, you need to think about attitude. If you lose or get close to losing, watch your game back. Figure out what you did wrong, not what your cannoneer did wrong, what you did wrong, own it. Figure out how you could play better and how can you learn from the game. Remember, Win or learn.